at our series, Generation Next, a young CEO who is in the driver's seat of her own rideshare company that's unlike anything else on the road. Today, Thursday, September 15th, 2022. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Coming up, a young CEO who is driven to make a difference in the world. How has she created her own rideshare company and why it's so different from all the other ones out there? Well, today marks the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month. And this morning, we are shining a light on a member of Generation Next, a young CEO who found some success in the startup world. NBC's Morgan Radford went for a ride with her. This is a cool story. Uh, yeah, and talk about success. Not just little success, yeah. big success, and doing something new. So we got a chance to sit down with Raven Hernandez to talk about how she became the founder of an all-electric rideshare company, one of the first in the nation. And we also wanted to find out what advice she has for the next generation of Latinas hoping to enter the tech world on their own terms. 27-year-old Raven Hernandez has always been driven. So I heard these things go pretty fast. They do? Oh! <laughs> now she's in the driver's seat. It's getting back a little bit of charge. As the founder and CEO of an all-electric rideshare company called Earth Rides. When was your first time in an electric vehicle ever, period? Ever that I drove was 2018. Just four years ago. Just four years ago, and now we are showing EVs and highlighting them all over the country. In 2020, Raven took her passion into overdrive. Hi, I'm Raven Hernandez, founder and CEO of Earth Rides. And founded the first rideshare company in the U.S. to offer an all-electric fleet of vehicles. We don't market ourselves as just an eco-friendly company. Mm -hmm. For us, it's really important about the safety and the quality of the rides. The majority of our passengers, they're looking for something better. A lot of people who get started in this space, they have some connection to, to financing or mm. venture capital firms. Did you have any of that? I had hustle. Uh, <laughs> my mother and my grandmother were both single mothers. They uh, taught themselves English. You know, they, they really hustled for everything they had. And I think that grit allows me to be where I'm at today. But you had to sort of open your own doors to get there, it sounds like. It's definitely opening a lot of doors. I mean, it's knocking, right? It's knocking on as many doors as possible and seeing which ones are going to open. And not every room is meant for you. A journey she started as the child of immigrants growing up in Nashville, Tennessee. My family's from Panama uh, in a town called Santiago. You know, it's, it's amazing and it's beautiful just to see how far we've come along in three generations. But like all journeys, this one had its turns. I had no idea this was in my future. I'm a licensed attorney, but along the way, I saw this opportunity to bring clean technology to communities that don't normally see it. Where did you find the drive? I mean, when I think about a hard day at work, I, I know that I, I have it way easier than my mother or my abuela ever did. I mean, my grandmother left her jungle and where she lived at 10 years old to go find work and support her family. And so when I think about getting to be in spaces like this with you, I mean, it's, it's humbling and it, it just makes me uh, fuel my own fire to keep going. A fire that's helped the company expand from its home base in Nashville to three cities, serving more than 300,000 passengers to date. An accomplishment that's even more remarkable given the state of the industry, where women currently make up less than 30% of the clean energy workforce and Latino founders accounted for just over 2% of all venture capital funding last year. A moment ago, you described having to knock on doors and that sometimes the rooms weren't always intended for you. When you got to those rooms, did you see other Latinas or Latinos? Not often, and so getting to be the first Latina in the room as an entrepreneur showing up in this space on behalf of my family and everyone else in the community, it's quite a load, and I always think about that and understand that I'm not the last, right? I might be the first, but I'm definitely not the last bringing others on a journey that's just beginning. Focus on what makes you uniquely you. Find strength in what makes you different and then run into that room and knock that door down. Oh, she's got some. Very cool, right? Look, 
as another example of how far that company has come. Raven says she started out funding it all with her own money, even wow. maxing out her credit cards. Well, now she says they've raised $2 million in outside funding thus far. And the rideshare market is following suit, making a really big shift towards electric vehicles. In fact, just this morning, Uber announced it is aiming to be fully electric by 2030. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So she's ahead of the curve. She's ahead oh, yeah. of the curve, so to speak. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs>